Hi, sweetie. I, I wrote a song for you. <laughs> I, just a little little something, you know, that to, to... Well, here it goes. I love your smile. We interrupt this YouTube video to bring you a breaking news announcement! Loudmouth Me has disproved evolution. Truly, this is a stupendous occasion. Let's go live now to this amazing announcement. You should ask yourself, using this theory of evolution, can we conclude without the presence of a human being, of human beings, uh, that computers or technology evolved on itself without any outside influence? Oh dear, he didn't disprove evolution at all. Hmm. What, what am I going to do? I mean, I've got all these people watching this video. and I know. I'll salvage the video. We're changing the video! We're changing the video? Yeah, we're changing it. Graphics! Get graphics in here. Hurry up. On delay. What am I paying you $2 an hour for? Hurry up. Ten, Ten arguments, arguments you should, should not, not use, use against, against evolution, evolution and, and why. I would be insulted if someone came around and claimed that technology uh, and computers came into existence by mere chance, no. You're talking about Paley's watchmaker argument, right? Which was originally a watch, you just substituted it with computer. And the original argument was this, suppose I find a watch and laying in the middle of the meadow, am I to suppose that it came together by random chance on its own or that the watch had a watchmaker? Well. That argument is not valid because watches and computers do not replicate themselves. Alright, now just take a breather after this hard hitting blows. You know, uh, mm, just waiting for it to savor. <sighs> this is kind of like a few minutes, a few second intermission, I suppose. Yeah. Hmm. Um, one of the best is thought that the bird began to evolve a wing. Uh, why would this occur is not answered by evolutionists. The wing sub did not make the bird more adaptable in his environment. The wing was much too small for the bird to fly. Why would a bird, a bird even evolve a wing that was useless? Now, this is backwards from the evolutionary natural uh, selection concept that birds uh, adapt and change in order to survive better in their environment. Now, this bird with a half size wing is placed at a disadvantage in its environment. Why would a bird continue for millions of generations improving a wing that was useless? What's the good of half a wing? What's the good of three quarters of a wing? How could something like those wings have evolved from the silly little wing stubs that must have been there at the beginning of the evolution of wings? Well, let's tackle this with another little Bryson special. These are not exactly flying creatures, they live up trees and they have wings to show they're creatures. They also have little eyes to show that they're creatures. Uh, they live up trees and if they were to fall from the trees, they would uh, have been at, in, at risk of breaking their necks. Thank you. Both of them, in this case, uh, from this low height, one with a little skirt and without a little skirt, uh, survive the, the, the breakage. At this depth, you don't need a little wing. This is a wing stub, call it a flange or a wing stub. It's not become a wing, but we're looking at the ancestral uh, stub that might eventually have evolved into a wing. When the height is sufficiently low, then nobody's going to break their neck. But if we raise the thing a bit, very carefully, Sometimes these animals are going to find themselves leaping from higher branches. 
And uh, from higher branches, it may be that these little, even pathetic little wing stubs like this might make a difference. Let's see what happens now. Right. Now, in this case, from that higher level... The golden tree frog of Malaysia is a treetop acrobat. Usually it hops just a few meters. But if it meets a golden tree snake, it happily makes a leap into the unknown. As it plummets, spread limbs slow its descent and its webbed feet double up as a parachute. The javan flying frog goes one better. Its webbed feet have evolved into miniature wings. Instead of parachuting, it paraglides at an angle. But it's the Wallace frog that achieves aeronautical perfection. Its huge webbed feet become aerofoils that slow and control its descent. It glides as far forward as the distance it falls. As well as winged feet, its whole body is aerodynamically shaped. This is classic evolution. One feature progressively improved until perfection is achieved. Um, <sighs> Petrified skulls and bones exist from these creatures. Evolutionists line up the promising choices to, to present a gradual progression from ape to modern man. Now, no, no, no. Uh, this is simply in, you know, fill in the big gaps uh, with make-believe creatures to fit the picture. Now, this procedure can be done with humans only because there are many extinct monkeys and ape species. Listen to me very carefully. Humans are apes. When we line up transitional forms of apes, there are no gaps. And I can prove it easily by playing everybody's favorite game show, Name That... Human! One of these things is not like the others. Which one is different? Do you know? Can you tell which thing is not like the others? I'll tell you if it is so. Well, I'll bet you guessed that this one right here was different. You're wrong. However, I was just a bit deceptive. The real answer, this one, was hidden so that I could make a point. The two are so similar that most people cannot tell them apart. The theory developed that perhaps uh, lightning struck a pond of water causing several molecules to combine in a random way which by chance resulted in a living cell. The cell uh, then divided and evolved into higher life forms. This view is now proven to be immature to the highest degree of being ridiculous. Okay, what's your point? Um, the, the most modern laboratory is unable to create a living cell. Oh, not this sad old argument again. As I've stated in a previous video, researchers at Scripps Research Institute watched RNA come together from non-RNA. They didn't create it. It just came together. Life from non-life. And even if they don't see things like this happen in the laboratory. Even if they can't make a cell or they can't make a protein or they can't make RNA. So freaking what? The theory of evolution, which deals with descent with modification and the changing of allelic frequencies over time, still stand. They go from cow into, uh, which later evolved into basically killer whales or whales. Now, it would be very more logical that these fish, uh, which over generations evolved into bigger fish and bigger fish and, and to, you know, and eventually Shamu. A whale is not a fish! 
this is the most hard-hitting fact right here. Number five, a DNA error checking proves evolution is wrong. Yes, but the error checking is not always 100% accurate. So mutations or errors still get through. I'm sure whatever website you got that little tidbit of information from conveniently forgot to tell you that. But the second law of thermodynamics proves that organization cannot flow from chaos. Uh, complex live organisms cannot rearrange themselves into an organism of a higher form as claimed by evolutionists. The second law of thermodynamics does not apply to living organisms on planet Earth because planet Earth is an open energy system. We receive energy from the sun. You know, that big bright thing in the sky. There's no scientific evidence that a species can change the number of chromosomes within the DNA. Oh, except you're flat out wrong. We see it every single day. A person with Down syndrome has an extra chromosome. Klinefelter syndrome is when a person is born with an extra X chromosome. 47XYY syndrome is when you have an extra copy of the Y chromosome. In fact, just for your information, there's an actual syndrome where a person can be born with three extra Y chromosomes. Big Bang Theory doesn't solve the problem either. I mean, uh, matter and energy have to come from somewhere. No, actually, it doesn't. The entire energy of the universe as a whole can be calculated to be zero. That means matter and energy does not have to come from anywhere. It could have come from nothing because as an energy system, it is nothing. But it's a pretty complex concept and you know, I'm gonna leave it to physicists. Number nine, put it up, nine. Lack of life proves, uh, uh, on Mars proves evolution is wrong. We actually don't know if there's life on Mars yet or not. We actually don't know if life used to be on Mars or not. <sighs> Frankly, we really need to send somebody there to check it out. We, we need somebody on the ground digging, looking for fossils. <sighs> I, I hope that happens in my lifetime. But if there's no life on Mars, that still doesn't negate the theory of evolution at all. I don't see how you're making that connection. I really don't. Number 10, the fact that we are all, all alone. Now, radio silence from space proves evolution is wrong. Uh, Mars is not the only place that shows no signs of life. The entire universe lacks any signs of life. Uh, there are no radio signals that can be related to any intelligent life forms. I'm gonna have to make another video just on this one thing. The universe is big, really, 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 really big, all right? We are so teeny tiny. We are so little. And we've only been here for a very, very, very small amount of time. I mean, we are like one ant that existed for only the blink of an eye, standing on top of the mound and going, but I never got to see New York City. You know, I mean, the universe is really, big and we've only been searching with very limited technology for a very limited amount of time I, i'll have to make another video on this subject other than that dude i think i think you're you're probably a cool guy to have uh, a beer with and if you're ever in the south florida area look me up but you really don't understand what you're talking about i love your smile Ha ha ha!